Hi, this is Mike Kennedy, M005 Kennedy. We're continuing with our ham radio series. And we're looking at a key. This is an iambic key. Uh, probably if you've seen Morse code keys before, you've seen the one where people push down on. That's called a straight key. The straight key is, uh, is uh, totally dependent on how the operator uses it, how well it comes out. And this one would be too, except that we have some improvements here. We have a keying chip, a keying board. I shouldn't say chip, but there's a whole board here. And what this does is, we have one side of the paddle that is for the dot, the dits, and one side of the paddle that's for the dashes. And rather than it going to straight to the transceiver like that, it runs through this board. And what this board is, is takes our irregular dits and dots and shapes them perfectly and makes them so they would be more intelligible on the other side. Uh, now we still have to key in the right things, but uh, uh, this will make the code come out cleaner. Uh, this is a little kit I'm going to mention. It's a Pico Keyer Revision G. Copyright 2004 by NOXAS. There are uh, a number of types of keys like this, keying chips. Sometimes they're even built into more expensive transceivers, and sometimes they're built into uh, QRP kits, which are low power kits. But if you don't have one built in, you can use a separate one. And what I do is, instead of plugging the key into the transceiver, I plug it into this board, then I'd have run another plug from here into the transceiver. Now what we're going to do is just demonstrate it by, unfortunately my battery is a little weak, so the side tone, or the tone this makes to tell you what you're keying, is it that loud. So to remedy that, I'm going to hold it up by the, the, the camera. And I'm going to show you when I hit a dit, when I hit a da. Now if I wanted to send SOS, which is three dits, three da's and three dits, I'd go. There you go, that would be SOS. But you can see having this form, the perfect uh, dits and da's would be an advantage for you to make it more leg legible by someone else, whether they're using their ear or whether they're, they're uh, actually using a computer to decode it. Uh, you can send Morse code by computer and decode it by computer, but uh, frankly none of that is as good as a human ear and the human mind. The human mind can uh, much, make much more complicated decisions than a computer can, at least about Morse code. And, uh, and uh, you could have multiple signals that are all uh, within your hearing range and what would be fed into the computer, but your mind can pick out a single one and listen to it, kind of like uh, if you had several people talking in a room at once, it would be fairly easy for most people to listen to only one person, as long as they weren't all overly loud. And that's the same thing the human mind can do, which the uh, computers still don't have as much luck with. But anyway, this is a, a little improvement on being able to send uh, good code uh, without having you have the perfect length of time that you press your paddles. So, uh, and why Morse code? Well, Morse code got eliminated uh, over 10 years ago as a requirement for amateur radio. But the fact still remains, uh, Morse code carries farther. In other words, it's a simple sound. It's either there or it isn't. It's a tone, there or not. You don't have to discern a complicated thing like a word and figure out what the word is. So uh, it's very easy to com communicate extremely long distances with lower signals or communicate more reliably over shorter distances with Morse code, if someone's good at it, than with voice. Uh, 
And there are some different ways to transmit voice we're going to talk about too. We have AM, single sideband, and FM. And we'll talk about them later. But just as a astounding feat that I thought was pretty astounding, I was at a weekend recently, uh, the QRP Lobster Con meeting in 2014 at Thomas Point, Maine, and Thomas Point Beach, Maine. And uh, there were some hams there, two different hams, that actually made contact with Russia with only two watts of power using Morse code. So that shows you, uh, and they had simply antennas that were strung up in the trees, wire antennas. Both of the, you, the transceivers that people were using were kits that I would say uh, cost them a little under or a little above a hundred dollars to cons to buy the parts and then they constructed them. So uh, I think that's quite a feat and uh, some people can become highly, highly skilled at this. Uh, so there we go. Morse code, the iambic paddle, and we've got the keying chip to help us produce really good, what they call solid, really easy to understand Morse code. So this is Mike Kennedy, and I hope you'll, uh, M005 Kennedy, I hope you'll tune in again as I continue to piece by piece uh, talk a little more about ham radio.